This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Chapter 30 deals with capital rationing and sensitivity analysis. Essentially, this is revision of F9 topics. First of all, we'll look at capital rationing. And here we have an example. We have three potential projects. Uh, effectively, they are three different uh, quadrants of the Ansoff matrix. Market penetration, such as increasing your market share from 20 to 25%. Market development, maybe opening up markets abroad. And then diversification. And we have 24 million available. The cost of each of the projects is uh, noted together with their net present values there. And first of all, we'll say, well, what would happen if the projects are indivisible, which, which by and large is what you would expect of many projects. You can't half go abroad, so to speak, to, to, to open up. And if they're indivisible, all you can do is to try different permutations of projects. So the permutations we could try would be 1 plus 2. It could be 1 uh, plus 3. And it could be 2 plus 3. There are no other permutations available. Uh, we can't do all three of them uh, here because all three of them uh, is going to take 13 and we haven't got that. But 1 plus 2 is going to take 18. So that's within your 24. Uh, 1 plus 3 is going to take 20. That's within our 24. And then 2 plus 3 is going to take 22. And the NPV is coming out well, 1 plus 2 is going to be 6.7 plus 11.5. That's 12.2. That's 18.2. This is the cost. Uh, and then we have 1 plus 3. That's 6.7 plus 7.7. .7. That looks at 14.4, uh, I think. Yep, 14.4. And then lastly, uh, using in fact most of the capital here, is going to be 2 plus 3, 11.5 plus 7.7, 19.2. And you look at these uh, three possible permutations and say, well, that one there is the best. We would advise them in a situation of the projects being indivisible uh, to do. Uh, projects two and three. Second thing I think we need to think about a little bit is how valid is it to discount all of the projects here at 10% uh, because ANSOS matrix we should know or remember that the different quadrants have got different risks associated with them. Market penetration is fairly safe. We're in known territory both for product and for market. Uh, market development means, as I say, maybe trying to push your product abroad and may well not work. And then diversification is, of course, potentially very risky indeed. Uh, and I think we do have to maybe at least think, is it right to discount all of these projects at 10%? Or should we have done maybe project 1 at 10, project 2 at 15, maybe project 3 at 20, some sort of risk-adjusted discount rate? Anyway, uh, the second situation that you can have for uh, the um, uh, sensitivity is where they are uh, all divisible, infinitely divisible. And here what you must work out is the NPV per dollar needed in the restricted period. So in the first one it's going to be 6.7 divided by 8. These, these dollars, the, 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 these, these, this, these cost dollars here are particularly precious we, we, because we're going to run out of them. We must push them, if you like, use them in the best possible place. So that is 0 0.8375. And then uh, the next one's going to be 11 divided by 10, 1.15. And the next one's going to be 7.7 .7 divided by 12. So per dollar invested there, we're going to have 0.64. And this gives you a pecking order, and orders. It's saying for every dollar you put into project two, 
is usually 1.15 in NPV. That's definitely the best. Then the next good one is number two. And then finally, there's number three. So what we'll be doing is certainly make sure that we do project two. It is the best possible use of the, the, the restricted dollars out of the, the 24. So uh, we would go for project two. This is going to use 10 million. So this is the, you know, like the, the cost, if you like, or the, uh, the use that we're going to be having there. It's going to give us an NPV, because we're doing it all here, of 11.5. So that is a, a project number two because it was the best one to be undertaking. Then we go up to project number one. Total cost says eight. Yes, we can do all of that. So we can do all of that. That's going to give us 6.7. And we know we've got 24 in total. So we're going to be left with six there. So when we get on to project uh, three, the, the, it's both project three and the, the worst of them here, we can essentially do 50% of it. The whole project would cost 12. We have six left. We can do 50% of it. So instead of 7.7, .7, we're going to be getting 3.85. So the total NPV we're going to have is 3.85 plus 6.7 plus 11.5. It's going to be 22.05. And that would be the best, uh, most efficient use of this very precious, restricted amount of cash we have available. The key to this really is to remember this. It's the net present value per dollar required in the restricted period. It gives you a, an order in which to assign money to the projects. Second, uh, let's look at sensitivity analysis. So here we have a, a project which has been set out. So time not has got a cost of 130,000, DCF 130,000. It's got sales and times one to four. Uh, 1,000 units at 100 each, and the cumulative discount factor 3.17. Got marginal costs again times 1 to 4. This time it's 60. And then at time 4, we hit a scrap of 25,000. And you see, we come out with a, a a positive net present value there, 13875. But in a way, it's not very positive. We've got very, some very large numbers in here, like uh, sales and costs and so on here. And 13875 is quite a small percentage. What you do for sensitivity is to see where uh, can this become zero? How far can you alter some of your assumptions to bring the net present value down from 13875 down to zero? And basically what we're looking at is how far can any figure in this column here change uh, to reduce the net present value by 13875? So I'll do as I just do a couple of these uh, here. So let's uh, first of all think of the initial cost here. How sensitive is our decision to go ahead with the project? How sensitive is the cost? And I think you can see if this cost were to rise by 13875, if this became 143,875, then the net present value would be zero. So the percentage rise we could tolerate is that. So the cost can go up 13,875 divided by 130,000 times the percentage going to be about 11 percent, 10.7 percent. Looks about right. Now 10.7 percent isn't maybe very much, but at least it's cost, at least it's, 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 it's cash flows happening now. And if any of the, the cash flows in this calculation are 
likely to be in any way certain. It is probably the cost. You can sign contracts now. It's it's a kind of outgoing now. There's less uncertainty about it. So we might be fairly relaxed about a, a cost rise of around 10 or 11 percent. Let's look at selling price. And you think, well, what would change in my selling price? Currently 100. What is it going to do to any of the figures in in this column? And the only one that's going to actually alter is that 317. If you were to decrease your selling price by 10% from 100 down to 90, you would decrease your discounted cash flow, the revenue, by 10%. So the percentage fall on this we can tolerate is 13,875 over 130,000. Big one. Over 317,000. So 13,875 divided by 317. times 100 is about 4.4. So if our selling price was to fall by about 4.3, 4 4.4%, we would be in trouble. And I would say this is really quite sensitive. Uh, we easily see sales on in shops and things where you know the selling price is reduced by 20%. Uh, many of these sales like three, four years in the future, goodness knows what's going to happen in selling price there. And I would have thought that this, this is a an area that could stand more investigation to make sure our assumption of $100 per unit was reasonable. And the final one I'll look at is volume. You can do it in all of them. They're all set out in the, 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 the notes, so, so they are. But volume, we think if the volume was to reduce from 1,000 to 900 to 800 and so on, which of these figures are going to be changing? And it's actually these two figures. Uh, halving the volume will halve the contribution. So if the contribution was to fall by 13875, then we'd be in trouble. So we're going to have 317 minus 190, 200. So that's a contribution on the bottom line that is proportional to the volume. So we're going to have 13,875 divided by 317, It's uh, going to be about 10.94. Not as sensitive as a selling price, uh, because uh, if you change the selling price, you drop the selling price, you, you're purely losing, you're purely losing revenue, uh, so you are. But if you drop the volume, you are saving some costs as well. You're losing revenue, but you're saving some costs. Uh, so you would expect the uh, sensitivity to the sales volume to be a little bit less. So that's maybe not too bad. How likely do we think it is that the sales volume would fall by around 10 or 11%? It fell any further, then this would become a zero NPV, uh, and and you'd be getting into a kind of territory where you would rather refuse the project than accept it.